Amen. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord's good. Yes, he is. Brother, awesome word. Um, I want to just take five minutes if I can. I heard the Lord say something to me this morning, and I've, I'm going to be gone for a week, and I just got to share this, or I'll be busting all week long. I'll be preaching to everybody in the world. How many of you have been in a dark room before? I'm in a dark room where you can't see anything. And if you're in a kind of what we would think is a little spooky place, like an old house that you've never been in before, or a warehouse or something, and it's dark, you cannot see anything, but you hear a lot of things. Somebody needs to hear this today. You're in a dark place in some area of your life. And when you can't see, you've got no answers. But you're hearing a lot of stuff. You hear stuff you don't want to hear. And if you could just get somebody to turn on the light, it would change your whole perspective about everything. What you hear, what you think's going on in the life that you now live. Everything changes when you turn on the light. And I heard the Lord say to me this morning is, when you need to learn how to activate, how to turn on the light. See, it's all in you. It is your life. He is the reason you live and move and have your being. It's not like we're trying to get God to come do something. He's already there and done everything he's going to do. And he gave me three examples, and I preached this to you recently when you're at Passover, when you first come to God, whenever you're on this journey, you start at Passover through Pentecost and in the tabernacles. You follow the same route 1 Corinthians 10 says. It's not an option, but it's the way you will walk. You will walk from Egypt to the promised land. They were set there as an, in samples to us. And they stood there at the Red Sea. And darkness was upon them because all they could see was what they heard. Oh, the, the, the Egyptians are coming to kill you. There's not a real room in Egypt. And they make up these stories. They start making up these things that they see be, in their minds because they cannot tr see the truth. And they're standing here and they're going to die. And they're doing religious things. They're, they're doing things. They know their hope is God. How many of you know your hope is God? Your hope is Christ in you, but yet you don't have an answer for what you're facing. You're in a place of darkness. And they're standing there, and God basically, basically says to Moses, get up off of your face. Quit doing what you're doing. Oh, I just heard that. Quit doing what you're doing just because you think it's right or it's religious or it's God. If it's not bringing you light, it's not what you need to be focused on. And here's what God says. Get up, stop what you're doing, and activate the light that's in you. The light that's activated. How do you activate it? You go towards the thing, listen, towards the thing that is stopping you. Towards the thing that looks like it's greater than you. That looks like something you cannot change. It looks like something that is bigger than you could, you can't even come up, you can't even fathom it, but you go towards it. And just as soon as they took one step towards it, and this is what the Lord's been saying to me for weeks and I've been preaching, go towards what, you're, what you need, what you're, ser what you're searching for, what you, the light that you, that you know that God's, go towards it. Activate any way, any step. Here we are, we're in Egypt. We've, we, we've had... We've had 400 years of bondage, and yet we're still babies in Christ. We don't know anything about God. In fact, we argue with God about who he is, and we start saying, you just brought us out here to die. We have very little. These people don't know anything about God, but God shows them how to activate, and they get a miracle that's, that literally 
we preach it now as being a great move of God. No, it was a step they took. God has always been great and always will be great. It ain't about getting God to do anything. It's about activating what he's already given them. And they take a step and the Red Sea opens up. The next step in Pentecost. This is a Passover incident. Pentecost incident in the, in the wilderness. What do they need? They need water. And they find water. I could preach a lot about the water and what they need. And, but the very thing that they need is bitter. And God says what? Put the tree in the water. The tree's been there. We can preach the whole story. But they put the tree in the water and the water becomes sweet. The very thing that they cannot, the very thing they need, they cannot partake of it. They cannot use it. It's there. They got it. They got the water. You got everything you need in you. It's there. You just don't know how to activate the life. And they put the tree. I don't have time to preach all of this. They put the tree in the water. And the very thing that was bitter becomes sweet. They activated the life of God. It's still another look at the cross. It's a look back at Passover. It always is. And then the third dimension. This is what the Lord showed me. Here's a man who's blind from his birth. And there's darkness there. He's never seen light. It's a greater revelation of the life of God and how it works. And here's what Jesus says. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. In other words, you're looking at the Father. What I do, I hear him say. And I see him do. And we're going to activate life today. Where death has covered his eyes for years, we're going to activate life. And here's how we activate it. We just touch him or just, no, he's, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make mud. I don't have time to preach about the mud and all of that, but he puts mud in it because the manifold wisdom of God's found in so many things. But yet he puts some mud in his eyes. He says, now you go activate this miracle. You go activate this life. We have a relative, and I don't want to get into that today, a relative who got some bad news from the doctors this week. I went up and I prayed with him before he went into surgery, thinking it was going to be one thing. They come back and say, you've got cancer spread all over your body. Nothing we can do for you. But the life of God's there. I'm, I'm going to get a chance to get to him and tell him we're going to activate this life to send you. We're going to find a way to activate it. Here's the thing that the Lord showed me. All you've got to do is hear the voice of God just to take a step. Just to take a step because you don't know anything about the cross. You don't know anything about that blood that was on the doorpost you just walked out of. You know very little of it. Very little about the lamb that you ate. You know very little about it. But you know something. How many of you know some things about the lamb? How many of you think you know some things about the cross? And we think our knowing of things, natural things, changes our life. You've seen where it's changed your life in some dimensions, but yet there are times where we need one, just one little word. Go. Take a step forward. Huh? Take a tree. Put it in the water. Take this mud. Go wash it off. I'm telling you. I, I preached it the other day using Dean as a, an example. He says, my life has been changed. I mean, people hear him say something because they see something on the outside, but he, he really feels like something's changed on the inside of him just from something in the natural that happened, just because he made a decision to go one direction. Just because you take a step many times, because you feel like it's God speaking to you, you take that step, what happens? You turn on the light. You activate life in you. I know that sounds kind of, Maybe not so woo, spiritual, but I promise you, 
If we're going to sit around and try to talk God into notion of doing something, then what Brother Earl preached this morning was a bunch of junk. Because what he told me, there's something already true about me. It ain't about God out yonder and me right here. It's about us together. Amen. Activate. Activate. Get a word from God. How hard is it for us to just say, God, I just got to shut up and shut my mind down. I just, I just need one word. Just give me one word. Just, just point one direction. Just point one direction. Just say anything. I'm ready. Huh? Where we, we, we at least give the doctors that. We give the doctors more credit. We give God something. We'll go to the doctors. Doctor, tell me what to do. Oh, take this tablet and take it two times a day. And he's just practicing. <laughs> you follow me? We, we, we just need a word. Come on. It's like I say, if, 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 if this stuff don't work, Let's go home and watch Andy Griffin. Forget about this. Come on, he's working at us. I'm telling you, he is working, and he's working all things together for your good. You just got to get on in, get in on what he's doing. Most of the things he's working together for your good, you don't know anything about now. You have no clue. I had no clue. That had not God been working things together for good, I wouldn't be here. I'd been gone. I found out you are what you eat. And I could preach another sermon there, but you are what you eat. Come on. These physical bodies manifest what you put in this little pie hole right here. But you know what? God's so good, He'll tell you what to eat, He'll show you what to eat, He'll show you how to, He'll teach you how to eat. We don't get God involved enough in this life that we now live in the flesh to get a manifestation. Amen. We need him to tell us stuff. We need to, when we pick something up, we pick our fork up to stick it in something. We need the spirit of God to manifest uh, or, or to minister to us whether we should eat it or not. You say, that's too technical. No, it's not. You'll get into a place where you have such a freedom to just hear the voice of God. Just move with the voice of God. Now, I think I'll leave that alone. I feel good and I don't know I want that. I don't need that. But you think your flesh is smarter than the voice of God. It's not. Say, so turn on the light. Say, so activate. Come here, Brother Earl. I want you to close service. Activate. Turn it on. Ain't about hearing a good word, good preaching word. It's not about that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's about hearing his voice. So you want me to go wash these mud patties out of my eyes? You know, you know it's going to take me some work to get somebody to take me down. If most of them ain't going to want to walk with me because they think I'm stupid because I've got mud stuck all over my face. But I will get down to that pool and wash them off. Huh? Because faith without works is dead. Brother Earl preached about the faith, but without the works, without you hearing the voice of God and Taking that step, responding, walking that direction. Amen.